I heard this really sad story about these three elephants that were living at the Woodland Park Zoo. They'd been living there for 40 years, and half the year, or six or seven months, they lived in a really tiny space because it was too cold for them to go out. The citizens of Seattle petitioned the zoo to let the elephants go. A sanctuary had offered to take the elephants, but the zoo, they said no. I decided to look for someone who could communicate their story to the world to try and help them. So I thought, I'll find an animal communicator, somebody who can talk to the elephants and tell us exactly what they're thinking. And I searched and I found Danielle McKenna. Danielle agreed to come with me to the zoo. So he is saying, I'm here, I'm awesome, I'm the best, I'm king, making sure everybody knows it. <laughs> So I'm talking with the dad, and it was very cool because when I asked him where to focus, he said the elephants. And he knows the elephants in each other. They all connect with each other. And They're they all talk to each other. So he doesn't give me a word, he doesn't say sadness or anger or depression, but he shows me a feeling of heavy. So if we look at kind of the energy of the elephants, it's very low, and that's what he points out to me. A lot of people ask me what, um, what an animal communicator is, and it's somebody who communicates telepathically with animals using the universal language that all animals use to communicate with each other. So I have learned how to tap into that. They're used to doing it, so when we do it as people, you have to kind of butter them up. Most animals are fine with me or somebody else connecting with them in this way. I can feel pain in my foot if the animal has pain in their foot, and, but it also works that way with emotions. A lot of the time when I'm connecting in, then I'm feeling the elephant's grief or sadness or fear. And I'm actually experiencing that. It took me four times to really connect in with bamboo over a period of several hours because bamboo is um, not as receptive. And bamboo did start to open up. I was able to feel bamboo. But I didn't get a ton of information. I did then um, try again during lunch and bamboo said, no, <laughs> and she's not necessarily that trusting of humans or other animals. When I connect in with Watoto, there's just such a huge feeling of resignation. And she just kept saying, nowhere to go, nowhere to go, nowhere, like repeating it over and over. And so then I'm watching her as she's saying that. I just feel so bad. And she's, that's all she's saying to me with this huge heaviness. She doesn't have a lot of hope right now. They can talk to me in paragraphs if they want. When, when someone is depressed or, or sad, it's hard to raise the vibration to really get the good information. That's all she can do right now is say nowhere to go, nowhere to go. And it's crazy that the, the the kids are watching and looking and laughing. And this poor animal is just saying, nowhere to go, nowhere to go. Walking in circles, this is as good as it gets for these things. When I asked child, does she know how long she's been here? Does she care how long she's been here? Um, the, the curt answer she gives is just, too long. <laughs> That's all she says, too long. Chai's baby, named Hansa, died when 
Panta was six and a half, which I didn't want to talk about the baby. It was like she, the energy stopped and, and she wouldn't connect with me anymore. I know the zoo considers Chai to be breedable. This is not an animal who's interested in having another baby. I continued to ask her a little bit more, just soften her up and see if she would say more. And the only thing she said was that she was happy the baby was dead, but she doesn't feel sad for her baby. She needed the baby to die because she didn't want to die first and leave her baby. I ask her about home. What is home? And she doesn't have home. She shows me home is closeness. It's, it's not necessarily a place, it's a feeling. And she doesn't have that. It's a closeness with others. At some point, it would be cool to tell you what an elephant said and not cry. I wanted Chai to know that there was a place, a home, a sanctuary that has offered to take her and Watoto and Bamboo. And notice I'm not crying because she, she accepted that and was into it. Do elephants go to heaven? When I connect with an elephant on the other side, they'll show me trees and warmth and other elephants and touch. Touch is a really big piece and community. The feeling of it is that home feeling that Chai was talking about. I would call that heaven. And it's really everything that Chai is asking for right now, but she'd like to have it here <laughs> on Earth. <laughs> It's too late to help a Toto, but we can still help the two remaining Woodland Park Zoo elephants, Chai and Bamboo. Please take action and call the mayor of Seattle 1-800-273-8255.